Hey guys, Carl here. Today I'm going to be talking about the FX6 and my specific build that I have for it and why I chose to build it out like this. Um, I'm going to break it down and all the way down to the body and then I'm going to build it back up so I can talk over each piece and why I chose these pieces to put on this and kind of the, the functionality of each piece as I put it together. So let's, uh, let's break it down. So just to start off this build, at the heart of it is the FX6. This is just the bare bones body right here. Um, fits in one hand, not super easily, but it's just a little square box and it's awesome. I love this little box. Uh, if I just want to set it up like this with a lens and a little top handle and the monitor, I can do that. If I wanna build it out like you just saw, I can do that also, uh, obviously. The lens that I put on this guy, 90% of the time will be the 35 f1.4. If I'm doing talking head interviews, I'll run a 35 and then on my a7s3, I'll run the 70 to 200 on the uh, other side of that, usually at around 100 or so. This 35 millimeter at f1.4 with 12,800 ISO, there's not much you can't do with this. Um, if you're using clear image zoom, you're around that 42.5, 40, 42.5 range. So a really great focal length two lenses in one with that you know, clear image zoom, so it helps out a lot. The fact that this is an autofocus lens helps out a ton, but I can always switch it to manual focus and have a nice little focus ring on there. So if I'm running an external uh, focus motor or a manual focus motor, or if I just wanna dial it in by hand, it just gives me a little bit extra traction on that rubberized ring. I, I do like using autofocus. You know, the fact that the, it has great eye tracking and autofocus built into this body. And with focus breathing compensation, this lens just performs really well. So super sharp lens. Sometimes I'll run a uh, Pro Mist or something like that on there, but it's just a great overall, but it's just a really clean looking lens. Uh, if I'm looking for something a little more, you know, characteristic, I might grab you know, DZO Vespid or uh, an old FD lens or something like that. But for majority of my work, the 35 millimeter is on this camera. I think maybe the only other lens I would use on this quite a bit would be like a 51.2 or a 51.4, just because you get that extra, a little bit tighter. Plus when you clear image zoom, you're in that 60 something range. So kind of a cool focal length also at that 60 range. So that's it on the lens. So next up on the list of items I have is my Bright Tangerine left field base plate, universal base plate. Make sure I say that properly. So this guy connects to an RE dovetail, uh, which I have right here. I'll show you here in a second how I do that. Holds two 15 millimeter rods. And I'll sh also show those here in a minute because I, I like using those rods for, uh, for handles or uh, lens support or battery support if I want to. So this guy just mounts on there pretty nice and easy. Give it a little snug, not too tight, just a little snug. So the really cool thing about this, like I said, is it's a quick release. So it has this nice little lever right here. Just push that out. And then you can just one, two, and lock it in place. And I'll give you another view from this side so you can kind of see how that works. So right now it's unlocked and I can just pull it off and then pull it on and it's locked in place and that's not that's not going anywhere. I could lift it up by the camera itself off the tripod or lift the whole tripod up rather um, with that. So, and it's kind of cool too. Like if I just wanna move it up or back and forth on the plate, I can just unlock that, slide it back and forth, but it's still not gonna go anywhere. I can't get that off of there unless I hit that all the way unlock and then I can slide it off. Um, so once you hear that first click, you can kind of slide it back and forth on here. If, I, if I've got a bigger battery and I want to slide it, you know, if I want to adjust it on my tripod or whatever I'm putting it on, um, super nice, makes it just really quick when you want to balance something or if I have to level this off with my tripod and then it's a little bit 
uh, for front heavy or back heavy, I can just slide it back and forth on there. So I'll just lock it out in the center for now and locked in place, definitely not going anywhere. So that's the Bright Tangerine left field 15 millimeter quick release plate. Love it. All right, and next up, I'll just take it out and put it back in. So this is the, next up on the list is the Sony battery. I put this on the camera every time I run it and that's, I'll show you why here in a second. But you can just drop that in place and the battery's in. And that takes us to our next item, which is the wooden camera Anton Bauer battery plate. This is a V-mount plate, it's held on by two screws, um, which I'll just obviously put on right now. So one question I get on this piece, this product a lot, um, this V-mount plate is, is it pretty secure? Because it's only held on by two screws and they're tiny little screws held on um, by two spots on the body that aren't super deep threads. And it is a little concerning. Um, it has good support though. So I will say that, you know, as long as these screws hold out, it, it pushes itself down on itself on the bridge of the body. So it has pretty good support. I have heard of a few people that have stripped out these screws um, or it's come or the, the actual, you know, battery plate has come off. And I think a lot of that has to do with if you're transporting it with a battery on or uh, things like that, that might be the case. Don't over tighten it either. Just give it a nice little snug little ha ha on there. And uh, that should that should suffice when it comes to um, to mounting this. The reason I love this guy so much is it has this little rotatable piece so I can kind of drop it in place and I can adjust the battery plate however I need, however I see fit. So I could drop it down like that. And that's, you know, standard 90 degree. I could pull it up if I have to. And the really cool thing about this is I can hot swap batteries. So without turning off the camera, now this, I will say this though, these cameras boot up so fast, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you did absolutely not need to turn off the camera, if you're in an interview situation and you can't turn off the camera, you're just running the, the little monitor or the Sony monitor, you can hot swap batteries off of this, no problem, because you're still running that BPU 30 or 35 or 60, whatever it is in there, and then you can just take that battery plate uh, or the battery off still running and put it back on because it's just charging this battery inside the camera. Uh, it's not actually powering the camera unless you take the battery out. And in that case, then this would become your main source of, of, of power. It's just an invaluable piece when you're doing long form content um, or you're out in the field for a long day and you need to switch out batteries over and over. This is a nice one if you just need to keep it running and going. Plugs into the bottom of the camera down here and then you can just tighten that back up. I do have a Condor Blue quick plate here, and that's for my uh, tentacle sync. So when I'm syncing up, or if I'm doing time code, so I got this bracket right here for my tentacle sync, and I'll just drop that in place, lock that in, and now I've got my tentacle sync mount right there. It does get a little tight right here if you're running time code and an SDI out, but uh, I think it, it, you know, it keeps all the cables and everything kind of in a clean area, and that's. That's what I really tried to do with this build is just keep it tight and clean. I don't like a lot of cables going everywhere and and it uh, becoming kind of a nuisance. So next up, I'll actually throw the tentacle sink on there so I can show you what it how I set it up. Um, so what you have here is tentacle sink, time code generator, and then uh, I have my time code cable and a little locker to make sure the cable doesn't come off of this guy. So I'll just put that on like so, and then I'll put the locker on. And now that's not coming out. I can't get that out of there. So it's just locked in place. And then I'll put that guy just like that, lock it down. I like to do this before I put my battery on or anything else. Um, the thing I don't like about this is it is kind of a cable that I, I have to manage. And it's, I put it up through here like so, and I kind of just tuck this cable into this battery area down here. It doesn't move. I've never had it come out or anything, but uh, it is a little messy. I know I, I like to keep, I said I like to keep things clean, but that one is a little messy sometimes. That's that right there, as you can see. Total sync time code, little lockout on the side, and I'll drop that battery plate. So now it's back at that 90 degree. It has a slight angle just because it's touching that, but you're not gonna notice that at all. Uh, next thing I'll put on is my battery. 
I have a couple of these. These are the Core Neo 9s, HyperCore um, from Core SWX. They're a great battery, have a little button on the side that gives you a, a, a light. So if it's dark out and you need to see how much battery life you have left, you can do that. If you're running at 4K 120 or something like that, you're gonna get about an hour and a half of filming out of it, but that's plenty, honestly, um, with that battery. And it's that's kind of what it looks like right there. And I'll show you both sides of it so you can kind of see all the way around what it looks like. The real reason I, I got this battery plate, besides it being hot swappable and, uh, and kind of just a really nice build, it is more expensive than the other versions, like the Tilta version, is because I can change out my SD cards. So right now, with that down, as you can see here, I have an SD card. Uh, one of the biggest gripes I have or had when I rented out the Tilta version of this is I could not get to my SD card slot. So as you can see here, I can I can get this in here without even looking at the back of this. Try doing that with the Tilta version, it's impossible. So you just have a ton of room. And then if you really need to, you can pull this up and you've got even more room to get into your SD card slot, super easy. Now we're gonna get into all my bright tangerine stuff. First off, I'm gonna do the top plate. I love this top plate. It's got a ton of quarter 20 and three eighths mounting locations on it. So if I need to mount anything to it, and I'll show you here what I do mount to it here in a second. Um, the one of the things that's already on it is this little bubble level. Uh, this is from wooden camera, pretty inexpensive. I think it's like 20 bucks, something like that. But I just like to have it on there in case I'm you know, running around handheld. And I just want to make sure that everything's level. If I don't have, I mean, my monitor has a level on it too, but sometimes I just like to look down at that and, and have that too. I don't know, it's kind of a cool little, cool little thing. It's got a little wooden camera logo on it. Stupid purchase, but I like it. So yeah, bright tangerine stuff. It just uh, fits super well. You're not gonna get anything better. Um, if it was to me, wooden camera and bright tangerine are the two product lines that I put on this camera. Uh, there's a few little things like that, uh, like that quick link from um, Condor Blue and a few other small things like the Ari base plate down here. This guy, um, they're just too expensive if you're gonna buy a bright tangerine one. I, I think they're they're better and they're nicer, but 100 bucks versus like $400. So you can, you can do the math there, just nice and easy. Uh, their stuff just fits so well. It's so well made. It's so much, so much more quality than other things I've felt in the past. Like I did, I did have some tilt of stuff at the beginning of this build. I sent it all back because it just felt cheap. Sorry, uh, it felt more inexpensive and it didn't didn't fit perfectly. Like I, I found myself having to modify things and you don't need to give it a lot of tightness, just a little snug on each one of these just to make sure that nothing's gonna come apart. But their fit and finish, Bright Tangerine's fit and finish is just so quality. I, I come from a manufacturing background. My dad's a journeyman machinist. So when I got these products in, I, I knew they were quality from the price of them. Uh, I was hoping they were quality anyway for the, from the price of them. And when I got them in my hands and I actually started mounting them on my cameras, they are quality. You're not gonna get anything better. And this isn't sponsored by Bright Tangerine. And maybe it's just because I've spent a lot of money on these products, but you're not gonna get anything better than these Bright Tangerine products. They are, the, the fit and finish is just amazing when it comes down to what you get for the money you're spending. Um, I have the top plate and then again, 90% of the time I'm running external audio. So I don't actually need my top, my, my XLR handle. Um, so I'll run the filler right here and I'll just throw that guy on super easy. And I'll flip the camera around so you can see that here in a second of what the bright tangerine stuff looks like. Uh, sometimes the fit and finish is almost too good. Like it's, it's snug. Uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way when it comes to too good, but it's, it's a very snug fit. So here is, there is the top of the camera. As you can see, they have the top plate and then the filler. So you've got three rows all with three eighths and quarter 20 mounts on them. And then I'll show you what I do to this right now is I use the Bright Tangerine top handle. Uh, this top handle, it's expensive and there's a lot of other ones out in the market that you could probably purchase, but you're not gonna get something as quality as this. Again, just coming to Bright Tangerine, it's just so quality, plus it's telescoping. So I could put it in and out like that. If I'm running my easy rig, I'll 
push this thing forward as far as possible. If I need to balance it a little bit differently, I can balance it up and it just locks in place, push that down and you can't move it anymore. Um, super snug, really good fit. And then on the front of it, I've got a 15 millimeter rod mount, again from Bright Tangerine. It's just got this really cool little Bright Tangerine logo on it, so I had to have it. Now, uh, in all reality, I hate monitor mounts. Monitor mounts are my biggest pet peeve when it comes to um, what a monitor does when I'm working with it. If I'm working uh, in the field and my monitor rotates without me wanting it to rotate or flips down without me wanting it to flip down, I get very upset. It pisses me off when these products, and I won't, I'll name a few, why not? I've had small rig and I've had Condor Blue monitor mounts, the tilt and swivel type. And I've thought to myself, these are great because everybody has them. Uh, they probably work well because nobody seems to complain about them. But every time I've had one, it's failed on me at least once or twice. I can't stand it. I've tightened it up. I've tried doing all the things that, that they say. I've called them and been like, hey, this thing is swiveling on its own. I've tightened it up the way you guys say, and it just still isn't working properly. So my solution is this. I have the 15 millimeter rod on the front of my top handle. Slides on there just like so and then you just lock it in place, the top handle. And then we'll go to the monitor because I'm talking about it right now. So this is the wooden camera, 15 millimeter rod uh, monitor mount. And all it is, is a 15 millimeter rod and on the end of it has a nylon piece. And then it mounts to the bottom of the, of the, of the small HD 702 touch. Not in this case, you can put it on any monitor you want to. Uh, not any monitor because it does have the pins for the small HD and they're proprietary pins. They're not like RE type pins. This guy, you just put it right in there, tighten it down and you don't have to go super tight. It's nylon, doesn't need a lot of tightness. And then you just slide it in like so. And now I've got myself a monitor mount that I can just tilt like so. And you don't have swivel, but guess what you do have? If you're a YouTuber and you need to flip your monitor around ever, you just go like this and you've got a flipped around monitor for your YouTube videos. And now you have a monitor that looks really good up top and high. It's very presentable and you can tilt it if you're you know, shooting really close to yourself and you need to look up at something. Um, yeah, just, I mean, get rid of those tilt and swivel things and get something like this. It just works so much better. So one thing I really do like about this monitor is it has mounting points on, on the sides of it. If I really want to run this thing off to the side of my XLR top handle, I can do that also, like so, and I can just take this guy off. But for now, we're going to put that up there, and that's the monitor mount. And then now we'll touch on the actual monitor itself. I've got some fingerprints on it. I'll clean it up, I promise. This is the Small HD 702 Touch monitor. Um, I wanted this monitor for a long time just because I really wanted a 7-inch monitor. And the fact that it's touch capable and you can swipe between menus, um, has all the functions on it, false color. Uh, you've got LUTs, pre preset LUTs you can put in there. It comes with a set of LUTs that are really good too. Um, super easy to use, very uh, expensive, <laughs> but, but it's worth it. And you have HDMI in and out, and then you also have your SDI in and out. And it's powered by a little uh, DC, connector underneath, or you could run your Sony batteries on the back of it. Uh, there's also pl other plates you could put on there if you want to run a V-mount plate or things like that, you could do that. I have Velcro on the sides of it because I'm running a uh, monitor hood most of the time. Um, I didn't bring that out with me, but anyway, yeah, so I'll run that on there. If I'm running this thing off to the side of my camera on my XLR top handle or something, it is a little bit big. A five inch would be preferred at that point, but I don't have the funds to go out and buy that, especially when I'm buying all the bright tangerine stuff. Uh, but the 702 Touch gets the job done and I like having a, a bigger monitor anyway, so it works out well. Next on the list are my bright tangerine drumsticks. Titanium, uh, they're really light. Sterling titanium, they say. These are the 12 inch versions. So next up on the list are my bright tangerine uh, drumsticks. These are the 12 inch drumsticks, sterling titanium. They're very lightweight, a little loud when you're doing that. Uh, but they're you know about the same weight as carbon fiber. Carbon fiber might be a little bit less, but they're gonna be more rigid. Uh, there's gonna be zero flex in them, and you can tighten the crap out of things on them, and you're not gonna dent them. I've broken some carbon fiber ones in the past from trying to get the handle on there super snug to where it wasn't moving. 
and uh, just not worth it. So I went with these guys. Again, they're they're bright tangerines, so they're gonna be a premium, but you get what you pay for. Remember that, you get what you pay for. So I just run them all the way to the very end. They butt up against my battery plate. And then I got the 12 inchers because if I wanna run my 70 to 200 and I want a lens support or any lens that's longer than the 35, um, I try to run lens support no matter what, just in case I'm running a matte box or something on the end of this. But yeah, so I got the 12 inches for that reason, because out here you can run a matte box on a longer lens and not have any issues. So I'll push those all the way in for now and then just tighten those up with my bright tangerine base plate here. Just nice and snug. As you can see, snug. They're not going anywhere and they won't rotate either. Okay, going to the next piece here. This is the wooden camera Ari Rosette and I'll just throw that guy on there. Um, this is for my side handle that I'll run off the side, which I'll show you here in a second. And just give it a nice little snug, not going anywhere. And then the cash paw, bright tangerine cash paw side handle. Um, I do at some point want to get the shoulder mount system. Bright tangerine, if you're listening, would love to make a video about that. And the FX6, this FX6, this beautiful bright tangerine built out FX6. Sorry, anyway, uh, I just throw it on here like this and I run it as my connector. So if I'm running handheld on my um, easy rig or if I'm on a, on a tripod or something, I've got really good control of my camera with this side handle. Plus, I promise I'm not flipping you off when I do this. I run my manual focus like this if I'm manual focusing. Um, my middle finger is just my longest finger and it's the easiest one to get there. So I apologize if you think I'm flipping you off. And then I have got full capability to run my aperture ring here also, depending on which lens it is. Most of my lenses are all down here. So it's it's pretty easy to do that. Um, and then what I'm running on, like I said, on the easy rig, it's just so nice to have that extra for, you know extra handle there to hold on to. And it's just so comfortable. It fits so nice in the palm. It has a really good fit and finish and feel to it. It's definitely not gonna go anywhere because uh, this Ari Rosette is nice and snug and uh, you can adjust it too. So if I really want this thing at a different angle, just move that, tighten it up, and now it's at a little bit different of an angle. And same thing if I just wanna loosen that up and twist that up like that, tighten it back down, and it's just not going anywhere. So got enough room there for my hand in that little area. Just a great little addition to this camera, honestly, is the uh, cash ball handle. Plus it just looks cool. Got that black and orange look to it, and this like mesh webbing from Adidas, I think they said, when I watched the video, you got you, you got me, Bright Tangerine, you got me. All right, so next up on the list is my little Sony monitor. If I'm running uh, autofocus and I wanna do some face tracking, eye tracking, things like that, I'll run the monitor that came with the camera with it. Um, if I'm running out in the field, most of the time I won't run that, but I'll build it on here just to have it for this build. So I'll just throw this guy on. This is a uh, the other piece of this wooden camera, actually. So you can mount this to the front of this. And I didn't know that, that it came with that. So I bought the 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter rod mount from Bright Tangerine, but it comes with this, but it's okay because I use it now for my little monitor, my Sony monitor that came with the camera originally. And I'll just throw this guy on like so, and then tighten it down. Um, and it just depends on where I want it. Sometimes I'll lay it more flat, so. I'll lay this guy down like so, and then I've got a nice little monitor mount right there. Uh, it is a little shallow, so um, you do have a little bit of room in there, but I've never had it come off. I've never had any issues with it. I'm not gonna say that it won't, but I never have. I'll wrap this around once, and then I'll just plug that guy in like so. And there you go. So now I've got a monitor two monitor setup if I really want to do any touch focus or if I want any other settings. A lot of times I'll run this in um, false color or I'm running it in something else like a LUT or something. And if I want to you know, kind of bounce down here and just kind of see one if I have zebra set up on this or if I don't want both settings uh, to be the same, I can run two different monitors and have different looks for either each of them. Um, it just helps out a ton when I'm, when I'm trying to you know, get a specific look, or if I'm just trying to expose correctly, what 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 have you. I just like having two monitors. It is nice. And the autofocus capabilities with this monitor is really where I, uh, I you know, excel at with it. 
So that's why I run it. It's not always on there, but for now, on a lot of jobs, it is. Next on the list is my, well, the side handle from Sony for the FXX. Uh, it's a love-hate relationship with the side handle. I like it a lot because it is very ergonomic and you can adjust the uh, position of it around like that. It does have a little bit of play to it, which drives me nuts, but it is what it is. Um, I really wish there was some other way to get a good side handle for this that didn't have any play, but that's that. It's just a regular old side handle, but I do like it because you have your stop, start, record, and you can flip it around and uh, do everything you need to do with it. So that's that. Nothing too special about it. Does, you can hear that and you can kind of see it. It does move a little bit. And that's just because of that rotating piece. It allows you to, yeah, it drives me nuts too, trust me. But anyway, that's that. All right, a uh, couple more things. My map box, you gotta look professional, right? You gotta have a map box. I went with the, well, I, I went with it a long time ago, is the, uh, Polo Pro map box, the VND map box. Um, at some point I like to upgrade and this isn't a call out to Bright Tangerine or anything, but at some point I like to update to the Bright Tangerine map box just because of the fit and finish of their other products. I just know that it's gonna be awesome to have. But this guy, I just mount it on there like so and it becomes my lens support and my map box. It fits on there, give it a nice little snug down and it's not going anywhere. And it's now, like I said, become my uh, lens support as well. So that's the Polar Pro uh, map box, the professional or whatever it's called. I forget what it's exactly called. Two stage, so I've got two stages on there. The thing I don't like about this map box is the proprietary uh, filters you have to run with it. They're expensive, uh, which filters are expensive anyway, but they're proprietary. So you can't use them in any other system. If you bought another system, you can't use them. Um, or you can't use other filters in the system either. You have to buy the ones from Polar Pro. And that's a positive and a negative, but you can't just go down to your camera store and usually buy a filter for this system. You have to order it specifically from Polar Pro or B&H, or you have to order it. Uh, where a lot of camera places, a lot of camera um, distributors, whatever, uh, stores, sell four by five or four and a half by five uh, inch filters for the map boxes. Uh, a lot of them keep them on hand, so. That is a, a positive and a negative to this map box is that fact. Um, one of the things I do love about it, I don't have a filter in it right now, but the filters, they have this little piece on the top. You just slide them in and then you lock them in place with these little dials down here. And it, it, it they are secure. I will give it that. So um, that's the Polar Pro map box. All right. And onto one of my favorite pieces, and I don't know why it's my favorite. I think it's just like the color setup and the fact that it's custom is the Cable Flexor Cable. Uh, I had this custom built. He, the company, he, his name is Jay. Uh, he's a smaller company out of San Francisco Bay Area, but they produce very high quality cables. He produces very high quality cables. I'm pretty sure it's just him building these. He might have a team, I don't know. But he does a really good job. I highly recommend giving him an order if you need a cable built for yourself. So I just had this one custom made that is a 90 degree SDI to a straight SDI on the monitor side. And then I've got a DC barrel connector uh, for the monitor and then to a DTAP connector for the, uh, on the, on the uh, battery plate back here. And I'll just set this guy up real quick and show you how I mounted up on this guy and how clean it is because it is just such a clean feel to this camera. I run it underneath my side handle like so. And then just that guy like that, plugged in. Remember everybody, last in, first out for your SDI cable from your monitor. I disconnect on the monitor side personally, um, but yeah, so last in, first out. We don't want any blown out SDI cables or ports on any of our products or any of our stuff. So um, just remember that when you're putting in your SDI cable. One thing about this barrel connector is a little annoying. I wish the uh, small HD 702, 702 Touch had the Lemos connector. That would be nice to have. I feel like it's just a little bit quicker when you're on set and trying to plug this guy in. I'm never really unplugging it besides when I'm taking it apart or putting it in, but you never know. That's my build. That's how I set it up. 
That is the FX6 cinema build that I s go out in the field with every time I shoot, majority of the time. Obviously, if I'm running this on a gimbal, it's just a top plate and the uh, left field mount on there, and obviously a lens. I usually don't run the supports or anything else with that when I'm running it like that. But yeah, so hopefully you guys got something out of this. I'm gonna leave a link to all these products in the description below. And you can go check out their, their websites and the products at uh, you know b &H or wherever else I link them to. And you can kind of just see the quality that these brands produce and what else you can fit on your camera. Um, you know, I built this out to be something that's just easy to grab and go. And, uh, and it does everything I need it to do when I'm in the field with it. So yeah, hopefully you guys got something out of this build out. It's such a nice camera to use out in the field and it really does everything you need to do in this state. And you can strip it down so much if you need to for uh, for smaller run and gun stuff. But I personally like this fit and finish just because it feels robust and it makes me feel like I can pretty much get everything done that I need to get done. Can you use a smaller camera? Of course. Can you use an FX3 with just a lens? Absolutely. Do you need all this stuff? Not necessarily, but does it make it easier when you need to do certain things? Yes, it does. And to get myself in the positions I want to get myself into, um, I like to have a camera built out this way instead of something a little smaller sometimes. Plus, when you're running handheld, that extra weight gives you a lot better movement when you're trying to either walk or you know do some, some cinematic stuff with it. So uh, that's all I got. Hope you guys got something out of this. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, if you'd like to. And uh, leave a little comment down below if you have uh, a specific way you like to build out your FX6 or camera in general, or if there's things that you think that would look better or work better on this build out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.